Now, Joe Kubert over at DC Comics worked with a, with a hand letter named John Costanza on what I believe is the definitive Tarzan. Why? Because the lettering by Costanza had, again, the same character as Kubert's artwork itself, which was rough hewn, which was jagged, but was also beautiful. Look at this vertical panel by Huber, which, if you know anything about Joe Huber's work, is a classic Huber composition. But look how the lettering makes you want to read it. Unlike those Windsor McKay things that say, don't read me. John Costanza's lettering says, and look at the difference between Roman for normal words and then bold italic. It is John Costanza's face that has been processed with a computer font called Whizbang. That is the only face I use, as I'll show you later in my order. But Hubert always was doing great things with type and covers in his covers, to the point where in the mid-60s, he did two issues in a row of comic books that look like books. And Hubert never stopped in the 70s. Look at the logo for Ragman, which was pretty innovative at the time to use a photograph, like a half-tone photograph of... You know, Rags, he was actually a superhero from the Garden District. I kid you not. <laughs> Ragman, this is what I'm saying. But again, this is an Irish chap, but that's probably Joe Kubert. That's, that's a great logo. Now, after Saranko, the only artist in the early 70s to pick up where Saranko and Way not left off, but showed the way, was an artist named Walt Simonson. Who, you Rizzi grads among you, was the reason why I went to Rizzi, because in 1973, when he started doing this book, Manhunter, I'm in high school thinking about going to art school, and I see Walt Simonson's work, and what struck me from the very first issue in the summer of 73 was his use of type. I started to recognize had a life to it, had a design to it, that I hadn't really seen before in comics. So a little bit what Saranga was doing, and look closely, guys. See that little graphic there? The mark of a great signature. That's the Walt Simonson signature. He always signed his name that way. It showed me a budding artist, and then I read in the back of the comic. He's a recent graduate of Rhode Island School Design. I'm like, Rhode Island School Design? If they could turn out a guy like Walt Simonson, that's where I want to go. And, you know, this was black and white work, but whatever science it did in the early 70s was very influential, as I'll show you, on later comic designers, because he started to do things like this with his type, and you can see the time he's taking to make the type come alive, so that as you read the comic, you read it, you see it, you see it, you read it. It is comics, word, and image working together. Symbiotic relationship. Later on in the 80s, um, Simonson went mainstream, so to speak, by totally breaking free from what had come before with the Jack Kirby Thor and doing something brand new. And by smashing the logo, he was in effect saying, I'm going to take what you think of Thor as being only associated with Jack Kirby, and I'm going to smash everything you know. Now, this was 1983. Meanwhile, back in 1969, Neil Adams, one of the great comic artists of all time, tried to do a similar type of thing. Except, this is, the re this is the cover that was accepted. This was his original cover, where he wanted to put the characters on the logo. Stan Lee said no, and that's why you get the other cover. Now, Neil Adams, unfortunately, came along at a time in the early 70s when Irish Trap was long gone, and the cover designers he was left with to do all the ancillary work I mean, look at the beauty of that illustration, whereas everything else around it, which is not Irish Schnapp, is horrible and clunky. Look at the beautiful design that Adams based that cover on. Look at how the elements, look at how the three circles of yellow harmonize. There's a beauty to that. Look how Batman's ears are perfectly, look how there's just the right amount of negative space, right? To use all those things that we learned. Right? That's great graphic design within comic book art. Unfortunately for Neil Adams, he came at the wrong time. 
And it took years until guys who were Adam's children, so to speak, like Howard Shaken in the early 80s, at the same time Simonson was doing that Thor, Shaken started to do this character American flag and really making his type, done by his lettering assistant named Ken Brusnanak, a big part of his illustration, which again was 10 years after Simonson was doing similar type things. Shaken was bringing that forward into the 80s.